Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple box bag. This doesn't have any lining, it's just one layer of fabric with boxed out corners. I made these so I can organize my gym bag because I have lots of different sports. This one holds all my swimming stuff and I'll be making another one today, which I'll be showing you, to hold all my racquetball stuff. A lot of the tutorials I was looking at for boxed bags didn't really explain how to find the dimensions of the fabric you needed. For my design, you need to cut two pieces of fabric. Their dimensions should be the width of the box you want to make plus the height and any seam allowance by the length of the box you want to make plus the height times the seam allowance. My boxes are 8 by 6 by 3 inches, and so I cut two pieces of fabric that are 12 by 10 inches. You will also need a zipper that's at least the length of your longest edge of your piece of fabric. I chose to work with Ripstop Nylon. It's super lightweight, kind of water repellent, and it just works really well for this type of project. And this gray is also kind of see-through, so it's easy to see what's inside each package. Let's get started! Okay, so to start off with, we're going to take the longer edge of our fabric, and if you have a right side and wrong side, we'll be putting the right side of the zipper, which is the part with the tab, down against the right side of the fabric. We'll also be using a zipper foot. Here you want to make sure you're not going too close to the zipper teeth, because if you accidentally stitch on them, you aren't going to be able to open the zipper. So make sure you stay about a quarter inch away from the zipper edge of the tape, so you have mm, an eighth of an inch of space by the zipper teeth. Okay, and just like that, you have one side of a zipper attached. And so basically we're going to do the same thing through the other side of the zipper tape using the other sheet of fabric. If you're like me and you have a zipper that's too long, make sure you match up where the fabric is across so you don't end up with having to cut off more than you need to when it comes to making sure the two edges match up. Okay, now we have this, super simple. Now I like to top stitch down on top of the zipper right next to it so you don't end up catching the fabric and the zipper helps keep things out of the way of the zipper pull. So since this is pretty slippery fabric, it's kind of hard to make sure you keep away but you can even do like a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge of your fabric here where the seam is. Just kind of follow along where your seam is. And as you sew, really pull your fabric out. There's just this little line of stitching. You can tell by the way the fabric puckers just keeping that fabric away from the zipper teeth. So you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so you can see here, well, this fabric just doesn't like me very much. It's kind of hard to do because ripstop stretches diagonally. Okay, so that is the zipper. It's now officially in there nice and tight. Um, so now we're just going to stitch it into a bag instead of just a giant sheet of flat stuff. We're going to switch out the zipper foot because we are now done with the zipper. Put my normal foot back on. So now we're just going to fold this in half and stitch along the opposite seam. This really long seam here that's opposite the zipper. Okay. And now we have a tube. Next step is to squash the tube. So basically we're just going to line up the seam we just did with the zipper. And this is where I like wonder clips, if you have that, or pins work too, to help just kind of keep things in place as you work. But yeah, just sew your quarter inch, three eighths inch, whatever you want along these lines, making sure that these two seams, the seam and the zipper, are matched up. And I 
as you come up to the zipper, make sure you aren't stitching over any metal stoppers on it. And if you'd like, like I like to do, you can back stitch over the zipper a few times just to secure the stitches there. And then you do the same thing on the other side of the zipper. Oh wait, before you do this, uh, make sure you uh, open up your zipper, at least halfway down the back. Good thing I have the actual zipper pull tab on the other side. Because if you, if you stitch this without opening up your zipper, you aren't going to be able to open up your zipper. Um, yeah. And this is where it's handy because once, you know, the zipper pull tab is separate, it's you got to make sure you keep these two ends together. Or else things are going to be fitting weird. Okay, now you keep sewing. Make sure you line up the zipper. And our next step will be actually boxing these corners, which is what turns this flat pouch into a box shape. If your zipper is extra long like mine is, trim off the extra zipper. If you have a fabric, like if you're using cotton for this project, you would want to get your serger out or just zigzag over these edges. Rip stuff doesn't really ravel. It stops every five millimeters because of these reinforced stitches both ways, but the zipper itself could ravel. I'm not super worried about it right now because this isn't gonna get tossed around too much, in my opinion. But if, you're, if this is a heavy duty bag for you, make sure you reinforce these seams and make sure these edges don't ravel out. To box out these corners, you're gonna take, I kinda like to iron this edge with my nails to kind of smooth it out. And you're gonna open it up and squish it. So the seam is like the middle of a triangle here. So I want my boxes to be three inches this way. So you take your ruler and measure and mark how far up you wanna go. I already had this line marked on my machine. So I'm like lining the point up with this line that I have and then backing it down to the edge. And boom, we have a corner. You just repeat the same thing on all three sides, and then you can, if you choose to, clip off this fabric. This is so lightweight, it doesn't really add much bulk for me. But you can always clip it off and then finish the edges so it doesn't ravel. You have an inside out back. So now you just have to go through your zipper hole, turn everything out, packing cube filled with air. And because I use ripstop nylon, these things go really tiny, like smaller than my fist tiny. So this is my fabric of choice because it's super lightweight. I mean, like I said, nearly waterproof. It's pretty good at repelling moisture. There are some that are specifically coated. But yes, yeah, so that's your cube. This one, blue zippers for swimming. And in here I have my swim towel, inside it's plastic case, goggles, nose clip, and my swimsuit. This is my rock climbing one. And it's a bit smaller because I don't need to hold as much stuff. I have my chalk bag and my ATC and carabiner for climbing. And light green zipper for a racket ball. So I, it's big enough to fit a case of balls and I have my, and this flannel bag for protection. I have my eye protection and my glove. Everything fits in this bag with room to spare for that support. because there really isn't much. My racket obviously doesn't fit. So that's just organization. So basically this is my gym bag. I already have my harness in here. It came with its own bag for climbing my smaller climbing bag with the chalk and stuff, my racquetball bag, and my swim bag. So everything just fits in here nice and simple and things don't get lost or down into the corner, so don't have to worry about it. So I hope you guys found my tutorial helpful. This bag is pretty simple. You can you know customize it to any dimensions you need, any fabric you wanna choose. So yeah, if you have any suggestions for other projects, let me know down below, and I can also answer any questions you have. This is my first tutorial, especially with the sewing machine, it's kind of hard to film things. So, 
Ask any questions, I'll help clarify my points down there. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Okay. Oh no, I ran out of... Ran out of bobbin. Finally. Two inches from the edge. Always cut your thread, or changing your threading machine, always cut it at the top of the machine. And then pull it out of the bottom. Because you don't want to pull your thread up through the machine because that has the possibility of messing up your tension. Oh, I didn't put the foot down.